Moving on to the structure of the heart, let's look at the valves. The valves maintain unidirectional flow of blood and prevents its regurgitation back into the opposite direction. That is, the valves maintain the flow of blood in one direction and prevents its backflow from the ventricles to the atrium. Now, there are two pairs of valves in the heart. First is the atrioventricular valve and second is the semilunar valves. The right atrioventricular valve that you see right here is known as the tricuspid valve as it has three cusps. The left atrioventricular valve right here is known as the bicuspid valve as it has two cusps. The semilunar valves include the aortic and the pulmonary valve. They have three cusps. The cusps are the folds of endocardium that is strengthened by layers of fibrous tissue. Now let's look at the atrioventricular valves in detail. Now this is a superior view. This is the right atrioventricular valve and this is the left atrioventricular valve. Both the valves are made up of a fibrous ring as you can see right here. This is the fibrous ring of the right atrioventricular valve. This is the fibrous ring of the left atrioventricular valve. Then they have cusps which are flat and project into the ventricular cavity downwards. So this is the cross section of the left atrioventricular valve and here as you can see the valve is made up of a fibrous ring. The cusps are flat and project into the ventricular cavity. This is the ventricle, this is the atrium and here you can see the chordate tendine. And finally the atrioventricular valves are kept competent by the papillary muscle. These are the papillary muscles. Each cusp of the atrioventricular valve has an attached and a free margin. They also have an atrial surface and a ventricular surface. The atrial surface is smooth whereas the ventricular surface is rough. The ventricular surface that is the underneath portion of this valve is rough due to the attachment of chordate tendine as you can see right here. Blood vessels are present only in the fibrous ring and in the basal one-third of the cusps. Nutrition to the central two-thirds of the cusp is derived directly from the blood in the cavity of the heart. In this diagram, we can see that the tricuspid valve or the right atrioventricular valve has three cusps. The anterior cusp, the septal cusp and the posterior cusp. These lie against the three walls of the ventricle. The mitral or the bicuspid valve has two cusps, a large anterior cusp or aortic cusp and a small posterior cusp. Moving on to the semilunar valves, here we have the aortic valve. The aortic and pulmonary valves are called semilunar because their cusps are semilunar in shape. These valves have no fibrous ring. The cusps form small pockets with their mouths directed away from the ventricular cavity. The free margin of each cusp has a central fibrous nodule as you can see right here. From each side of this nodule, a thin smooth margin extends up to the base of the cusp. These are called the lunule. These are the lunules. Now each valve has three cusps, so here we are talking about the aortic valve, it has three cusps which are attached directly to the vessel wall and opposite the cusps the vessels are slightly dilated to form the aortic and pulmonary sinuses. Similarly here is the pulmonary valve, it has three cusps which are attached directly to the vessel wall and opposite the cusps the vessel walls are slightly dilated to form the pulmonary sinus. Now concising the important points. The valves maintain unidirectional flow of blood and prevents its regurgitation in the opposite direction. The two pairs of valves in the heart are atrioventricular valves and semilunar valves. The right atrioventricular valve is known as the tricuspid valve. It has three cusps. The left atrioventricular valve is known as bicuspid valve as it has two cusps. The semilunar valves include the aortic and the pulmonary valve. They have three cusps. The cusps are folds of endocardium strengthened by layer of fibrous tissue. Looking at the atrioventricular valves, both the valves are made up of fibrous ring, cusps that are flat and project into the ventricular cavity, chordae tendine and finally the atrioventricular valves are kept competent by papillary muscle. Looking at the semilunar valves, the aortic and the pulmonary valves are called semilunar because their cusps are semilunar in shape. Each valve has three cusps which are attached directly to the vessel wall. Opposite the cusps, 
the vessel walls are slightly dilated to form the aortic and the pulmonary sinuses. Now let's look at the conducting system of the heart. The conducting system has the following parts. First is the sinoatrial node or the SC node, the atrioventricular or the AV node, the atrioventricular bundle or the bundle of His, the right branch of the AV bundle, the left branch of the AV bundle and finally the Purkinje fibers. Now let's look at each of it in detail. First there is the sinoatrial node. It is known as the pacemaker of the heart. It generates impulses at the rate of about 70 to 100 beats per minute and initiates the heartbeat. It is horseshoe shaped and is situated at the atrio cable junction right here. The impulse travels through the atrial wall to reach the AV node that is the atrioventricular node. Next let's look at the atrioventricular node or the AV node. It is smaller than the SA node and is situated on the lower and dorsal part of the atrial septum just above the opening of the coronary sinus right here. It is capable of generating impulses at the rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute. Next let's look at the atrioventricular bundle or the bundle of His. It is the only muscular connection between the atrial and ventricular musculature. It begins at the AV node, descends along the postero-inferior border of the ventricular septum and at the upper border of the muscular part of the ventricular septum, it divides into right and left branches. Looking at the right branch of the AV bundle right here, it passes down the right side of the interventricular septum. A large part of it enters the moderator band to reach the anterior wall of the right ventricle where it divides into Purkinje fibers. Looking at the left branch of the AV bundle, it descends on the left side of the interventricular septum. It is distributed to the left ventricle after dividing into Purkinje fibers. Finally, let's look at the Purkinje fibers. They form a sub-endocardial plexus. They usually possess double nuclei. These generate impulses at the rate of 20 to 35 beats per minute. Concising the important points under the conducting system, it has the following parts. First is the sinoatrial node or the SC node. It is known as a pacemaker of the heart. It generates impulses at the rate of about 70 to 100 beats per minute and initiates the heartbeat. The ho it is horseshoe shaped and is situated at the atrial cable junction. Impulses travels through the atrial wall to reach the AV node. Second, we have the atrioventricular node or the AV node situated in the lower and dorsal part of the atrial septum just above the opening of the coronary sinus. Third, we have the atrioventricular bundle or the AV bundle or the bundle of His. It is the only muscular connection between the atrial and ventricular musculature. It begins as the AV node descends along the posterior border of the ventricular septum. At the upper border of muscular part of the septum, it divides into right and left branches. Next, we have the right branch of the AV bundle. It passes down the right side of the interventricular septum. A large part enters the moderator band to reach the anterior wall of the right ventricle where it divides into Purkinje fibers. The left branch of the AV bundle descends on the left side of the interventricular septum. It is distributed to the left ventricle after dividing into Purkinje fibers. Finally, we have the Purkinje fibers. It forms a sub-endocardial plexus. They usually possess double nuclei. These generate impulses at the rate of 20 to 35 beats per minute.